Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor and a pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce Dr. Rogers. Um, Dr. Rogers has many accolades and many titles. He's a preacher, teacher, um, motivational speaker. All right. Amen. He's a counselor and a dear, dear friend. And um, he has been wonderful in support of my family. Um, Dr. Rogers would never tell you this, but about 15 years ago, he was my counselor, Amen. my Christian counselor. And if any of you, any of you have a need that you need to talk to somebody, I highly recommend Dr. Rogers. And one thing I can say this morning is he didn't even tell my husband, and they are dear friends, that he was my counselor. And that's the respect that I have for him. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. He's a product of the housing authority. You know, sometimes kids in the housing authority, the projects get such a bad reputation, but he's a son, Alan Benedict Court. If you happen, if they ever get Reed Street finish, you can drive through there and see him on one of those podiums. He, um, he, he is one of the uh, products of the Housing Authority that the Housing Authority is very proud of. But one thing I know about Dr. Rogers is his love for the Lord. He loves the Lord and I saw that in our sessions with him and he just inspired me and helped me to be healed through the love of Jesus Christ. And it's very important if you need a counselor and you call yourself a Christian that you find yourself a Christian counselor. Because uh, not only will they help you mentally, physically, but also spiritually. So I, I thank him for that. Uh, Dr. Rogers is an author. His two recent publications is Your Dominion Rule and Accept the gift, your one a day spiritual multivitamins. Yeah. And uh, you know, sometimes you're not supposed to listen to the conversations on the telephone, but if you're laying in bed with your husband and he's talking to somebody, you can't help but hear. And I heard about those one a day spiritual multivitamins. And we need those kinds of things in our lives. But uh, Dr. Rogers, uh, bio is on page starts on page 16 when you have time please read his bio and understand that these words cannot express the man that he is and i will present to some and introduce to others dr augustus rogers thank you Reverend Redfern and to Bishop Redfern and the members of the Ecumenical Church, First Ecumenical Church, and officers and members of City Light, all of our ministers who are here today, Amen. members of the laity, my Christian friends, brothers, and sisters. Amen. It is indeed a pleasure and a great privilege to be here with you today. And I am profoundly grateful for the invitation that was extended to me to come and serve as your keynote speaker for the occasion. The prayer movement is alive. Amen. It is strong. It is at work. And it is being fulfilled in terms of the assigned task given by God to advance the building of his kingdom here on this earth, Amen. to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. Yes, now let us do it one more time, my dearly beloved, before this book is outlawed, <laughs> uh -huh. before right. it becomes a relic, an antiquated relic and thrown and tossed on the junk heap of time, 
Let us lift our Bibles one more time. And yes, if you don't have a Bible, lift your program book. Good. Something, let's lift them high and get our exercise. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. It's the Word of God. I believe what it says. It tells me who I am, whose I am, and to whom I belong. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can. I am what it says I am. Lift them up now. I'm a child of God. A child of the King. I'm saved. I'm holy. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. I'm anointed. And I may see so of God's word. Let's give the Lord some praise. Come on now. Amen. Amen and amen. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Yes. Greetings, my brothers and my sisters. I greet you today in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. How many of you know that this is a beautiful day to be alive, still in the land of the living, on praying ground and pleading terms? What a beautiful day it is. I want you all to allow me, if you will, to begin this address with a word of gratitude. I'm most grateful and thankful for this blessed opportunity. I'm grateful for your invitation to share in this God-given experience. This is nothing less than a great moment in time to be here with you as we make history together. Yes, sir. This gathering today is the building of another tier in the advancement of God's kingdom right here on this earth. Today we demonstrate our commitment to prayer and sharing Jesus, our Lord, with the world. We are participants in partnership with Almighty God himself to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. I am not here today to dramatize, to jump up and down, and to excite. But I'm here to speak to your hearts and to your minds and challenge you to think and make contact with your God-given potential to make a difference, my dearly beloved, for good. I want you to tap into something that you might not realize is inside of you, that you have got something that you have, something that God has given you in terms of a talent, you've got a talent that has yet to be discovered. You have a talent that has yet to be identified. You have a talent that has yet to be used. Many of you have, uh, and all of you have at least one talent, but many of you have several, certainly more than one talent. You have many talents, and it's time for you to put those talents to work. In God's kingdom, my dearly beloved, my brothers and my sisters. And so, as we share this experience together, let us take a thoughtful look at the meaning of prayer practice. Say prayer practice. Prayer Prayer is something that we have to practice. (laughs) Amen. Daily. The practice of prayer. What is prayer? Mm. It was in 1819 that James Montgomery wrote this immortal, these immortal words. And listen to this, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this familiar hymn. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire, unuttered or expressed, the motion of a hidden fire that trembles within the breast. 
Prayer is the burden of a sigh, the falling of a tear, the upward glancing of an eye when none but God mm -hmm. is near. Yep. Prayer is the simplest form of speech that infant lips can try. Prayer, the sublimest strains that reach the majesty on high. Prayer is the Christian's vital breath, the Christian's native air, the watchword at the gates of death. He enters heaven with prayer. He enters heaven with prayer. From the moment of prayer until we die, somebody is praying for us. We are brought into this world with the utterances of prayer. If you don't believe it, you ask somebody who knows something about childbirth. Uh, they call, they tell me up on the Lord. Heard that a lady was praying so hard one day she called for God and she said, God, if you can't come, please send your son. <laughs> Prayer is an essential part of the Christian's life. It is as important, perhaps more than the air we breathe. We as Christians, my dearly beloved, cannot make this journey. Do y'all hear me? Without prayer. Prayer, my friends, is therapeutic. Yes, it is. Prayer is powerful. Prayer can go where we cannot go. Prayer can change things. Prayer can initiate and stimulate the working of miracles in our lives. And prayer can make and change the course of our lives. It can do all of these things. For I'm a living witness. Given the recognized importance of prayer, Jesus' disciples one day came to him and said, Master, teach us how to pray. Teach us as John taught his disciples. Are you teaching, my dearly beloved, others how to pray? Are you teaching your children how to pray? Would you dare try and have, if you will, some input on teaching a friend, a co-worker, how to pray? Jesus, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus answered, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The words of our Lord and our Savior Christ Jesus. The words spoken directly from his mouth. And you ask me how I know, I know simply because they're written in red. In the tradition in which I was reared, they told me that if it's in red, Jesus said it. And I'm here to tell you that if Jesus said it, I believe it. And that's enough for me. Jesus' disciples, very early on in their ministry, recognized the importance of prayer. They observed on many occasions Jesus himself at prayer. Have your children ever, ever seen you on your knees in prayer? Have they ever witnessed you by the bedside kneeling in prayer, talking with the Lord? Has a brother or sister of yours or friend <coughs> seen you in prayer? The occasion several years ago when an uncle passed, my father and I were in attendance at the funeral and we at a relative's house were privileged to sleep in the same room and I observed something at the age of 52 or 3 that I'd never seen before. My father was kneeling by the bedside with his hands folded in prayer. You think it made an impact and an impression upon a man like me? Surely it did. My father was not a church man, but he believed in God. He was a Christian, and I saw him in prayer. I never forgot it, and that's why I'm telling you this story today, to see others in prayer and for others to see you in prayer makes a difference in their lives. Can somebody, one person say amen? Amen. Jesus' disciples very early on.
recognize prayer as a tool. Say tool. tool. Prayer is a tool. It was an instrument that they were to pick up and use in their daily lives. And very early on, the disciples, Peter, James, uh, John, and Matthew, and Mark, Luke, and the others witnessed firsthand how awesome the power of prayer was. On one occasion, they saw Jesus take two small fish. Can you believe it? Yes, I can. And five barley loaves of bread. And with two small fish, and five barley loaves of bread following prayer, Jesus took this minuscule amount of food and he fed 15,000 people. Well, the Bible says, if you will, 5,000 men, not including the women and the children. It's assumed that 5,000 men had at least one wife and one child, 15,000. They all ate and there was food left over because of the power of what? Prayer. And before doing prayer, the disciples saw Jesus open blind eyes and unstop deaf ears. He united their untied uh, t uh, tongues that, that were tied and people who could not speak were then able to talk and he healed all manner of diseases and he raised the dead and all of these miracles were associated with the miracles of the power of prayer. Jesus knew so well the vital importance of prayer. He shared his power, his prayer, the shared his power rather. Uh, uh, Jesus in sharing the, the power of prayer said that men ought to always pray and not to faint. Not sometimes, but always pray. And not to faint. We are to always pray and not lose our faith. We are saved by our beliefs. We are saved by our faith in Christ Jesus. And as we pray, consider this. God works his power through us because his spirit lives inside of our bodies. It does live inside of our bodies. We should be aware that our bodies are the temples of God. That's what the word of God says. Our Bibles are the temples of God. Right. Amen. And so we're to be careful, my dearly beloved, how we allow our bodies to be used. We're to be careful about what we allow our bodies to enter into. We must be careful about how our bodies are handled because the word says our bodies are the temples of God. This is a literal statement. And through us, God does much of what has to be done in serving this present age. In his master plan, especially we in prayer, especially rather when we pray, God works through us. You see, God has no human hands but our hands. He has no feet but our feet. And if we fail to do God's bidding, his work on this earth, through us, must forever go undone. Now listen to this, my brothers and sisters, and I truly believe this. In John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, Jesus is reported to have said these words. And listen carefully now. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Oh, my dearly beloved, let us be careful now that we do not misinterpret the meaning. We can in no way be greater than God. We came from God. But God in this modern age is allowing us through science and other me mechanisms and, and measures to do things that were never done when Jesus walked the earth. We are able to do these things because of God and because of prayer. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, whatsoever, say whatsoever. whatsoever. Ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And yet we shall ask anything, if we should ask anything in my name, I will do it. 
under the guidance and leadership of Bishop Redfern and those who are working so faithfully with him and all of you who are in leadership, this room will not be able within a short distance of time contain the people that will come. Amen. God is doing a great thing. You all hear the word that has been prophesied. This room will not be able to contain those who are yet to come. What an awesome promise for God is not a man that he can lie. If Jesus said it, I believe it. And there is a great, great power in prayer. Can I get one person to say amen? amen. My friends, why has God blessed us so good? Why has God granted us such power? Why has he given us the tool and power of prayer? Well, the answer is simple. It is because of who we are. The last thing that the devil wants you to know is your true identity. Amen. He doesn't want you to know who you are. Sometimes we find ourselves in a state of spiritual and mental amnesia when it comes to knowing our true identity. We are the children of God on high, my brothers and my sisters. Oh, yes. We came from God Almighty. Yeah. We are literally the children of God. Hallelujah. We are the Thank children you. of God Almighty. Thank God you. wants his children to have the very yeah. best. Yeah. Can one person say amen? amen? The Bible tells us so. Believe the word of God. The Psalm writer in eight, chapter 8 and verses 4 through 6 said this. And, and go back and read it for yourself. God speaks to us. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visits him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor, and thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. My friends, God has given you dominion rule. Say dominion rule. Dominion rule. Accept the gift. Accept the gift. He's given it to you. He has put you in a position to shape the world. Amen. Beginning, somebody said to me this morning, with yourself. Yes. Lord, send the revival. Yes. And let it begin yes. with me. Yes. He has put you in a position to shape the world beginning with yourself and decide right now to allow God to work through you on his behalf. Allow right now God to use you for his glory and make up in your mind now, right now, that as you grow older, you will grow better. Amen. You don't have to grow to be broken down in age. You can grow in age to become stronger. Oh, my dearly beloved, can you believe it? Amen and amen. Right now, allow God to make you a giver. Yeah. You ought to want to give. For the Bible says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. For God is a giver. He wants us to give. And as a giver, give the truth of God's word to the spiritually <laughs> malnourished. Give a book for Christmas. Give a Bible. Encourage your children to read something good. For well, reading is fundamental. Amen. And when we make up our minds, agree. Come together and stay focused on an idea. If we're to have a powerful, meaningful, successful prayer movement, we must stay focused daily. We must pray for the success of the prayer movement because prayer changes things. Amen. Prayer makes a difference. Amen. Can I get one person to say amen? amen? Stay focused. Stay focused on a mission. Stay focused on a plan. The sky, my friends, is the limit for us. God has given us the possibilities for great things through using the tool and the instrument of prayer. Through prayer, there is no limit to our potential. 
Through prayer, there's no limit to our possibilities. Through prayer, we can change the world and make it a good place. Through prayer, we can stop all of the killing around us. Through prayer, we can feed the hungry. Through prayer, we can find, if you will, a cure for diseases. Through prayer, we can clothe the naked. Through prayer, we can provide shelter for the homeless. Through prayer, we can work out our soul's salvation. Through prayer, we can mend broken relationships. Through prayer, we can reclaim our children and say to the devil, you cannot have my child. Through prayer, we can transform the workplace in which we work. Through prayer, we can grow the church. And through prayer, we can transform the communities in which we live, the neighborhoods in which we live. Through prayer, we can reclaim our good health. Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. Do you know, my dearly beloved, there are too many lazy people? That's why we're so fat and out of shape. We are lazy. Y'all don't have to say anything. <laughs> this is a self indictment and that's why through prayer I'm trying to turn it around for me Amen. however however how do we reclaim our good health never start or end a day without prayer and pray in between these hours. Never go through a day without some type of physical exercise. Amen. Put a garden in your backyard. Mm. Grow a tomato plant in a flower pot. Mm. Plant some cucumbers and broccoli and squash. Yes. More, the more we work and exercise our bodies, the less likely we are to get ourselves in trouble. We can sublimate drives and energy that can lead us in the wrong direction and take ourselves in a right direction Amen. through prayer. Amen. Somebody told me the other day that they could not do exercises. I said, I got one for you. Sit down. You tired of going that way? Let's go this way. Sitting down. That's an exercise. Do something and see if it won't make a difference. Can one person say amen? amen? However many of you, my friends, believe in the name of Jesus. Do you not? You believe in the name of Jesus. And if you believe in his name, how often do you use the name of Jesus? You know, I think we're ashamed of Jesus. We are shy to use the name of Jesus. Well, I want you to know that there's a great power in the name of Jesus. And whatever your situation, if you cannot use but one word, let it be the name of Jesus. For there's power, I tell you, in his name. And when the devil comes toward you and is preparing to attack, use the name of Jesus and he will take flight. I guarantee you, let's try it. Say Jesus. 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 The devil is gone. Yes, he is. Can't stand the power of that name. Try and see if it won't work for you. And I tell you it will. Try it in the workplace. Yes, on the job. When co-workers want to engage you in nasty talk and tell them something, you tell them something about Jesus. That nasty talk will stop. That's right. You tell them, you, and see if they won't look at you a little strange. And the next time they see you coming, they will go the other way before you do. Yes, yes they will. Use the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm going to wrap it up. But as I come to my close, I want to leave you with this thought. A change, my brothers and my sisters, is on the way. It can happen with or without us. Yes, we will decide how it happens. And let us decide to be part of a change for good. Yes. Let us be a part of transformation for good. Yes. 
Let us get in the driver's seat and let us build the buildings that have yet to be built and let us fly the planes and let us teach the children and let us practice the medicine. Let us run the farms and let us execute the law and let us come into the right relationship with God and become the people he made us to be and let us build roads where roads have yet to be built and let us come back to work on God's side. Let us lift the name of Jesus. Use the power of prayer. And I want you all to repeat after me. If it is to be, it is up to me. Amen. If not us, my friends, then who? If not now, then when? If not here with you, then where? You remember that name? That name is above all names in heaven and even beneath the earth. The name of Jesus. And I want you all as I close to help me lift his name as we conclude this session. The mighty name of Jesus. Come on now, church. Let's do it. Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. We're going to say someone should say Jesus. Amen. Dr. Augustus Rogers, we thank you so much for a very insightful, encouraging, and practical message. Uh, we understand that you have a PhD, uh, MSW, LCPQRS, and a number of other uh, accolades for education. But we have never in this prayer setting heard such clear practical advice based on the scriptures that our Lord left us. Let's give Dr. Rogers a hand. We also want to thank each of you for attending today. We're right in the middle of transition. Some of you may be here for the first time this is the new location for City Light. We have an office down the hall, and by having an office here, we have access to the facilities here. Uh, this morning, you probably noticed that we have our telephone um, conference line. There are people calling in from all over the world who have shared this experience with us. We also have on the computer where we have video conferencing and there are a few people who have connected with us this way. Uh, next uh, month, uh, Brother Zoe Warren will be streaming this broadcast live all over the world. And uh, the technology that we've been talking about and experiment is now being implemented. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Let's give that a hand, please. Um, my role has diminished somewhat because others have stepped up. We certainly want to acknowledge um, Reverend Annette Balaguer for preparing and hosting the prayer breakfast. I remember we used to have a lot of donuts. Now we're having salmon and prosciutto uh, uh, and this uh, specially blend of coffee. Reverend Balaguer, we appreciate you. Let's give her a hand. Uh, her husband, Reverend Ramon Emilio Balaguer Trujillo, Reverend Ramon Emilio Balaguer Trujillo, is responsible now for the prayer breakfast. Um, he, you probably got an email or a telephone call or a Facebook notification, but Reverend Balaguer is responsible for the program and the implementation, and he certainly has done a great job today. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Amen. We also have a, a new staff person. Her name is Gwendolyn Bird. And this, Gwen, I think this is the first time I've said Gwendolyn. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I, I figured that. But Ms. Bird has uh, become our volunteer, and she's our office manager and chief administrative assistant. And some people say, well, why would you need to call her chief? Is she an Indian? Well, 
We are calling her the chief administrative assistant because we expect the others to follow. Amen? Amen. Let's give Ms. Burt. Burt, stand up Burt, so we can see you. Of course, we always want to acknowledge the rest of you. Um, and, and all of you are so important, but we have one of our past speakers here, and we just want her to stand. Yes, Janice. <laughs> Let's give her a hand. There's uh, several awardees from the uh, Esther Women uh, Conference. Uh, people were recognized for their service at City Light. Uh, we'd like for them to stand. That whole back row almost. <laughs> and that, you understand? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Ms. Thurman, Ms. Templeton, Mrs. Balaguer were recognized for their service for the Esther Women Conference and the things that they have done. And I understand that they are planning a conference now. Uh, Mrs. Templeton is responsible for the Tuesday Esther Women Prayer Amen. Session, Bible study. Thursday. Thursday. It's been moved. But uh, you know, the initial concept of 12 people getting together and praying has just impacted the world. And so we wanted to acknowledge that. Now we have one of the, the old timers back, and what a delight to see him, <laughs> Brother Bob Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob, just stand up. <laughs> Bob is one of the founders of uh, City Light and, and has been such, so faithful to us over the years. I came in this morning, I had to take a lady to get the key, and I pulled up, and there was a Chrysler 300 that was blacker than a thousand midnights down in the Cypress. It had a shine upon it, brighter than the noonday sun. And I said, Bob has arrived, amen. Uh, we certainly want to acknowledge uh, Sister Cook. Uh, Heather, won't you stand? Praise God. Heather is so active all over the city and has been an encouragement for us to get involved in the communities. And we certainly acknowledge and appreciate that. And Pastor Lassinger, I see you rode your motorbike, your moped this morning. <laughs> but we, we, we certainly appreciate the both of you. Uh, Dr. Rogers has his book with us. It's $15. If some of you don't have $15, we're going to buy some of them and we'll make them available for you. Um, it is now 8.30 and it's time for us to be over. I had so much I wanted to tell you about Africa, about Cameroon, about um, Uganda, Congo, but we'll save that for another time. Uh, we're going to ask Reverend Ramon to come and give us our benediction. Let us stand. Amen. Lord God Almighty, we just thank you right now. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your fellowship. We thank you that you gave us this time together to praise you and to worship you and, and to go out today and, and just think on you and spread your, your gospel. And we just thank you right now for everyone here. We ask that you bless them, Father. Bless them throughout this day and until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You are dismissed.